So in terms of smart speakers, Apple currently offers two options, not including any of the Beats line of products. That is the HomePod Mini and the brand new second gen HomePod. With a massive price disparity between the two, many consumers will inevitably have a ton of questions. Why such a massive difference in price in the first place? With one coming in at just $99 and the other at $299, it could get confusing trying to decide which one is the right fit for you. Well, no worries, you've come to the right place. I've had a couple of weeks now with the new HomePod 2nd Gen, and for the most part, it's very similar to the 1st Gen HomePod. But there's no denying that audio-wise, the full-size 2nd Gen HomePod sounds insanely better than the more diminutive Mini. Perhaps you're in the market for one of these, and I hope this video can serve as a useful guide for any of those in the market for a brand new Apple smart speaker. Before we begin, I want to invite everyone watching to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We have a ton of informative and fun content here on my channel ranging from battery drain tests, performance tests, head-to-head -head comparisons, band reviews, lots of unboxings, and so much more. Also, towards the end of the video, I'll have a speaker test so you can listen to both HomePods head-to-head. -head. Although I will say, nothing beats listening to these speakers in person. Hearing a speaker through a video only gives you a rough idea, but I'll do my best in showcasing their differences as well as going over pricing, availability, and features. And so now that the introductions are out of the way, let's go ahead and get started by rolling that intro. <laughs> Alright ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, so starting off, the HomePod Mini is priced right at $99 and has many of the same features as the HomePod 2, including support for Matter and as an output for an Apple TV 4K. However, audio isn't nearly as immersive as the larger HomePod, but it does offer a wider array of color options for those individuals who want a colorful and vibrant smart speaker. In fact, aside from the standard white and space gray options, the HomePod Mini also comes in your choice of blue, yellow, and orange, while the HomePod 2 only comes in white and midnight which is basically like space gray with a tiny hint of blue in there. While on the topic of the HomePod 2, it is priced much higher, like I mentioned, coming in at $299 and is actually down 50 bucks from when the OG HomePod initially was released. I know, totally insane. Especially in this economy with record inflation, Apple actually slashed the price, which just goes to show that probably... The HomePod being priced at $349 on the original HomePod may be led to very poor sales. But the HomePod 2 excels in audio quality, that's for sure. And best yet, it can adapt its audio profile automatically to the room it's in, a feature that the Mini does not have. So alright, let's start off with going into a deeper dive at their similarities and differences, and then conclude with the audio test. So again, having the HomePod Mini right under the magical $100 price point is very effective. It's a psychological and marketing trick Apple does so that your brain sees it as a much better price point versus $100, even though it's literally just $1 apart. Insane, but an effective tactic, literally. That price puts the HomePod Mini in the ballpark of Google's Nest Audio as well as the Amazon Echo, which happens to also have a spherical design like the HomePod Mini. And for the regular HomePod 2, I understand $299 is a tough pill to swallow. However, as you'll see later, in my opinion, the $299 price tag is justified based off how impeccable the audio quality is on this thing. The only massive downside to both, in my opinion, is that there is absolutely no way to have a wireless HomePod, at least not yet. It must always be hooked up to power and cannot be transported onto a beach or something, which is a huge bummer and one of many instances where a wireless speaker could come in handy. Now, at only 3.3 inches tall, the HomePod Mini is under half the size of the 6.6 .6 inch tall HomePod 2. Not only is it shorter, but its overall footprint is a lot smaller, making it more capable of being placed anywhere around your house or office. The HomePod Mini almost looks like a fabric covered pool ball that's colored to your liking. I quite like it, and the Mini is also very palmable, so for its size, it actually puts out some decent volume. There are a few design cues the Mini took from the larger sized HomePod, mainly the small touchscreen on the top of the device that is pretty straightforward. It sadly doesn't show you any pertinent information, like the weather or visibly displaying your volume levels, but it does serve a good purpose. 
You can raise or lower the volume straight off the HomePod Mini instead of using your voice. You can also long press on it to summon Siri, and it has this very mesmerizing color swirl that is easy to get lost in the sauce with, so do be careful. But aside from their similar mesh exterior, the major differences are found on the inside. The HomePod Mini's volume gets pretty loud, but nowhere near as loud as the full-size one, which can easily fill an entire living room with tremendous and concise audio, not to mention that bass though. With only a single full range driver and dual passive radiators, as well as two tweeters, the HomePod Mini has technically less physical audio tech than the full size HomePod 2. In contrast, the full size HomePod comes equipped with a dedicated high excursion woofer with custom amplifier and five tweeters. This isn't rocket science. The full size HomePod simply has more room to fit in a lot more tech, and this can easily be seen or heard when comparing the two. And like I mentioned at the beginning, one of the main features that differentiates the full size HomePod versus the Mini is in its ability to configure its sound output on the fly automatically with no input needed by the user. This is that audio beamforming technology that only comes on the HomePod 2, so that no matter where you place it, it can tell where walls are and configure its sound profile accordingly to ensure you get the best sound out of it regardless of where you position it. It isn't all doom and gloom for the Mini though. It does have Apple's S5 chip that allows it to use computational audio to better balance sound output at different volumes. And due to both of their designs, it means you get 360 degree sound versus it just blasting it in a singular direction. Both the Mini and the full size HomePod 2 have four microphones, useful for beckoning Siri for useful commands. Siri in my opinion is still behind its competitors, but the HomePod excels in music, and so it should be obvious that Apple is pushing an Apple Music subscription hard with the HomePods, seeing as how Spotify is still absent and still not compatible with Apple's HomePods. But a few other music streaming services in theory are compatible, which include Prime Music, iHeartRadio, and Pandora, with hopefully more soon to come. You can also use one or two speakers to create a stereo pair, and you can use both speakers as an audio output for your Apple TV 4K setup. Yet another way that Apple integrates all of their products together into its ecosystem. But only the HomePod 2 supports Dolby Atmos, which allows the bigger full-size HomePod to provide spatial audio. One of my all-time favorite features of both speakers is the ability to hand off music playing on your iPhone without relying on Bluetooth pairing. It's really simple. If you're playing a song on Apple Music straight off your iPhone speakers, you can easily place it near your HomePod and it only takes about a second for it to hand it off. And then it will start playing on the HomePod speaker. It also works in reverse, meaning as you head out to the store to buy some Takis or Hot Cheetos, you can get your iPhone close to the HomePod and the audio playback will get picked up by your iPhone. It's almost like magic. Also, both devices have temperature and humidity sensors built in, so that you can ask Siri for the temperature or humidity in your room or office. More importantly, you'll also be able to connect these sensors to HomeKit routines, so that if it gets a little too cold for your liking, it can automatically turn on your heater. And finally, let's cover smart home support, seeing as how these greatly elevate your smart home setup. Both the HomePod 2nd Gen and the HomePod Mini support Thread and Matter, a new smart home networking protocol which lets you connect low power devices such as smart locks. Right now in early 2023, there are only a handful of matter enabled smart devices, but given a few years, the amount of matter enabled smart devices is sure to increase sharply. All right, so now let's head over into our speaker test at varying volume levels to give you a broader range of the versatility of these speakers. Now, I have a couple of non-copyright tracks, but I also have some beats by my good friend Ken, who I met at UGA in one of my stat classes, and we've been great pals ever since. The guy is extremely talented and works very hard, so make sure to check him out over on IG before he inevitably blows up and pops off. But be the judge for yourself, and again, nothing beats listening to these speakers with your own ears in person, but this at least should give you a decent indication at the bass levels and all the other acoustics. Check it out.
in the end, what's the verdict? Clearly, the Mini simply cannot deliver the same audio quality as the full-size HomePod 2 due to the hardware constraints and limitations. However, for its price and size, it's perfect to place on a desk and jam out while you do some homework or work on a project or something. And at $99, it's a great addition to your Apple ecosystem and makes a stellar smart speaker even though Siri lags behind its rivals, given the humidity and temperature sensor found on both models, which do prove to be really useful. Audio enthusiasts may prefer the larger HomePod though, which has booming bass and is loud enough for a small get-together. It gets much louder, and the bass is way more pronounced on the larger version. And also remember, you can combine stereo pairs between the two models, meaning you could buy a HomePod Mini to complement your already existing HomePod for even more sound. In the end, the choice is yours, but I cannot deny there's a massive price difference between the two. In theory, you could buy two HomePod Minis, set them up as a stereo pair, save $100, and arguably, that stereo mini pair gets just as loud as one singular HomePod 2. You simply have to ask yourself why you are getting a smart speaker. Is your main priority having a voice assistant in your room and not spending a ton of money? Or do you not mind the price and simply want impeccable and loud audio? In that case, you should go for the HomePod 2. I can honestly recommend both, but again, it depends on what your needs are, so make sure to drop your comments down below. If you own a HomePod Mini or the full-size HomePod, let us know your experiences down below. I'm clocking out for now, guys, but as always, take care, make sure you stay hydrated, and I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.